Now let's apply a pretended stimulus package as is presently proposed for the obvious purpose of only extending the imposition of the present system upon us. Our comparison yet will give this hideous proposition credit. To succeed in ways we have shown it is impossible to succeed. In other words, it cannot, has not, and will not rescue all of us, or even the few it may help somewhat, to the degree we are offended. Nonetheless, let's follow even this unreasonably optimistic course for this purported stimulus, prejudicially claiming this improbable, unmanifesting outcome for usury against the maximal burdens of our case for mathematically perfected economy. We see the vast disservice of intentionally preserving terminal exploitation on the right-hand side. Relative to a circulation of 100 units, the disparity in debt is 638 units. Only mathematically perfected economy has liquid circulation, free to dedicate to other purposes. A relatively vast 64% of the circulation is free to dedicate to other purposes in mathematically perfected economy. No circulation whatever is free to dedicate to other purposes under usury. Usury's periodic costs of servicing debt consume 92.3% of the circulation which, even after applying the feudal stimulus program, can sustain only 79.14% of industry, with this inherently to diminish immediately as we continue to service a form of debt which can only multiply itself further at an inherently ever-escalating rate. So let's service the debts of the respective systems by their respective means to follow a visual representation of the explicit consequences supported by the accompanying data. We thus see the sum of debt artificially multiply under usury as periodic principal and interest are reborrowed to maintain a vital circulation until the costs of servicing debt exceed periodic earnings and this, of course, compromises creditworthiness to reborrow further above a sum of debt we already cannot afford even to service. Thus, the circulation disappears as we make our last fatal payments against the artificial sum of debt. All this while, the cost not only of servicing prior debt, but of assuming new debt to renew depreciating property and infrastructures remain 1% of a constant circulation under mathematically perfected economy. So relatively minuscule are the costs of maintaining a standard of existence under mathematically perfected economy that we have to reduce the scale of our graph to see them as the yellow superimposed portion of mathematically perfected economy circulation. The inevitable comparative costs under usury, likewise, are represented by the sum of the yellow principal and orange interest segments superimposed over the debt bar, which costs have exceeded even the increased circulation of the stimulus, and thus have inevitably consumed it to arrive at utter failure only delayed by a purported stimulus, which purposely avoids fixing the actual problem which is the system of exploitation itself. Thus, at the inevitable utter failure of usury, the circulation has disappeared in the final fatal act of servicing a mere artificially multiplied and inevitably terminal debt, which so compromises us that we cannot borrow further to maintain a vital circulation. The question to be answered by the people in any truly representative government, therefore, is whether we actually ever wanted the ever-escalating injustice and terminal failure of usury, or whether we wanted all this while instead, 
only to pay for each other's production with equal measures of our own, as is possible only under mathematically perfected economy.